What's up guys, Euclid back here with you again and welcome back to the channel. I said we'd be doing a Q&A and sorry it's a, probably two or three days a little later than I originally planned, but the truth is I was just tired, so we're going to answer your questions now. Starting with Jers, it's spelled J-E, capital R-S, says... It would be cool to see you playing Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's made by a Czech studio and takes place in an actual area of the Czech Republic during a historical invasion by the Kingdom of Hungary. The developers lean towards making as realistic as possible while still keeping it playable and, in my opinion, found a really good balance. So it's interesting you say that. I was actually just talking to my good friend and thumbnail artist, VFX Azel, about Kingdom Come Deliverance because he's been playing it. Unfortunately, there are some bugs with that game right now, which I'd say will be resolved if they're a common issue, where people are losing around 25 to a half an hour you know, minutes of progress when they play the game. Would I play it? Yes. I think the realism involved in that game, the fact that it's actually challenging, I do like that kind of setting. I also like the thought of it being medieval and maybe less overwhelmingly fantasy, which is kind of nice. I like games that do present realism but still have their own majesty about them. So would I play it? Maybe one day, but probably not anytime soon, to be honest with you. Thank you for the recommendation, though. Okay, so next up, we have a gentleman that simply goes by the name Arnold. And Arnold typed to us, of course, in Russian. He said, friend, play Stalker with mods. As much as I am a fan of the Metro series, I want other content, too. So that's good. Just keep it honest. That's, that's what I want, is honest criticism. Sometimes I feel like I have to pry it out of you guys, just to get you guys to kind of tell me... What needs to improve so i'm just left to try and do it on my own and that's fine but i like recommendations so we have one vote for stock with mods i'm gonna have to try and tally these up and may actually have to do some kind of a poll because it's pretty even this if you don't on this site it might be one-sided as far as youtube goes but there are a lot of people that are asking me to play vanilla they think that if i'm going to do a playthrough of the three games that a vanilla playthrough should be done first and I think a lot of people, including the developers, would appreciate that too, just because it's not a true representation of the original product. So I have no problem playing original. I enjoyed it too. Um, I think mods give it good life because it's such an old game, which is why Stalker 2 is such a highly anticipated thing. So moving on from that. Next up, we have Tyrell Wilson. Everything, man. Let's watch it all. So just yes. So he's selling me Metro <laughs> Horror Games. Stalker Vanilla and Stalker with Mods. Okay. Oh, we'll do that. We'll do our best, Tyrell. Thank you. Next, we have Axel Giller. And Axel's been following me for quite a while. Thank you for commenting, Axel. He says, Hey, Euclid, for the Metro series, I think it would be nice to watch a bad karma playthrough, as there are many points to discuss, and you always give nice feedback and reflections. Thank you. He also says, For the Stalker series, I haven't finished any of them yet. Started playing Shadow of Chernobyl last year, so my guess is that Vanilla would be cool. There are many games, see, we already got a vanilla vote. There are many games around, and this Eastern European mood, like 35mm and Chernobylite, you always bring great content, so I'll be glad to watch it the way... I'll be glad to watch it the way you find the best. Thanks for sharing your experience with us. No, thank you for watching. Ultimately, you give your free time to watch, and I need to remind you guys that that's why the channel actually is doing decently, is because you guys return. So I appreciate that. Next up, we have Sierra075. And thank you for being back. Sierra's been following me for quite a while, too. He's been supportive, and he's always honest, like in a blunt sense, with his criticism, which I can handle. I appreciate it. Just we get to the point of what needs fixed. He says, I would like to see you play the Stalker games vanilla and then modded. So vanilla first and then modded after. Okay, I like the thought of that, too, personally. Only mod I know of is the good old Stalker Evolution mod, which looked awesome. There's a lot of mods out there, man. Um... Vanilla obviously should be played first for people that haven't played the Stalker series yet, but there's a lot of great mods out there. Anomaly is a great pick em up and go mod for people that don't want to mess with the Call of Chernobyl, but we can get into that later. He says, Defo full Metro game playthroughs about it, bad endings. For a Q&A, will you be returning to Sins of the Prophets at any point, and if not, why? That's an interesting question. Sins of the Prophets is one of the best mods I have ever played in my life. And the reason for that is because it realizes something that the Halo series, I hate to say it this way, has ultimately failed to realize thus far. Halo is in the future, 500 and something years in the future, 
set in space where massive fleets of different factions exist, and yet there has been no game focused on space combat. So, the wonderful team at Sins of the Prophets took it upon themselves, and I won't go into too much detail lest I give any kind of false information out, but led by their team lead, Unicrocken. Formerly on their own, now part of Choke Point Games, and I will leave links to their websites and their media in the description below. You guys should really check them out. They took a fairly fast-paced space conquest real-time strategy game and has a very rock, paper, scissors, and then add four different types of other plays to it. They made this game amazing. There's only one thing about the game I don't like, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it just goes around the fact that I'm more of a slower-paced RTS player. I play a lot of Total War games. I think the combat's too fast. I think ships show up, and they're gone in 10 minutes. However, it is literally not only the best, but it is the only, I think, true game representation of what space combat in Halo would look and or play like. And that's why I like Sins. Will I be playing again in the future? I would say so. Yeah, eventually. But does it take priority now? No. No, it does not. The team at Sins of the Prophets, now who has become a part of Choke Point Games, have always been very supportive to me. And I would obviously want to promote them. But I would want to promote them when I don't suck. Because I suck at the game. I play on the easiest difficulty and I still lose. I like playing as the Covenant and as soon as an infinite infinity shows up, I'm dead. Because I don't think. Because I'm too mesmerized by the world around. It's also a very pretty game slash mod. So, yeah, eventually, Sierra, I will return to it. But as for now, uh, probably not anytime soon, to be honest. Thank you for your question. Next up, we have Max Sawicki. And Noob, I'm sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong, but thank you for commenting. Max is actually one of the admins on my Discord server. And Max says, I'd like to watch bad endings in Metro games without watching the full playthrough. He says, because we've already had full playthroughs. And it's going to take a lot of time to watch through everything again, but it's just my preference. Number two, play modded Stalker. I'd like to watch something post-apocalyptic and not necessarily Stalker or Metro, like Fallout, Dying Light, or The Last of Us. But I know that you don't have a PlayStation 4. But in my opinion, The Last of Us 1 and 2 are masterpiece games. I agree. I think they're fantastic. I've watched a lot of gameplay and storylines. For games I either don't have the money for or I don't focus on, I will watch playthroughs of people I like. For example, The Mighty Jingles. He does not ruin. He does some of the best Let's Plays I've ever seen because of his character and his voice. Um, but I've never played The Last of Us games. I just know that their stories are fantastic. Probably more so one. <laughs> Um, he put, a must play if you love single player games with a great story, or even horror games like Outlast or Resident Evil, for example. I played Outlast 2 on the channel, and I played Resident Evil 7 Biohazard on the channel. They didn't do great. It was a long time ago. They were my horror playthroughs, but it was still a hell of a good time. So I do plan on playing the new Resident Evil games, especially with these insane looking trailers we have for the village and everything. <laughs> Milf Manor. <laughs> Vin will appreciate that. But no, um, yeah. But no, that's, that's what I want to do. So we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens with horror playthroughs. But definitely I will give uh, Fallout. I will give Fallout some consideration because I love Bethesda games. And uh, maybe we could even play a through of the older ones. Yes, the top-down ones. As crazy as that might sound. Next up he says, question for Q&A. What is your favorite game and game series of all time? What is your favorite book? What do you think about Russian Doomer music? Laugh out loud. <laughs> and do you have any plans of visiting Russia? If yes, then when? Oh, Jesus Christ, man. You know, I wish I could give you estimates and dates for everything, but especially right now, I can't. But let's go down the list. So for your first question in the Q&A section of your question, what is your favorite game and game series of all time? I'm going to pretend that those are separate things. Favorite game of all time? You know, I used to think that you could have a favorite of something. But it's kind of hard to do that. It's kind of hard to have a favorite of anything. And I think I learned that recently with people in my life, is that you can't really narrow things down. Because as you get older, you start to like things more often in so many different subcategories. That it's kind of hard to narrow things down and say, well, my favorite game of all time. Like, if I, if I, I, you asked me this like 10 years ago, I'd be like, Halo 2, hands down. Because I think Halo 2 was an insanely amazing jump. It had great voice acting. It had great gameplay, both campaign and multiplayer. It was my era of first-person shooter for both single-player and multiplayer. I was good at the game. And we did we had competitions in our high school. And 
we won most of it. <laughs> as soon as shields were put back on, we were playing stupid SWAT. We did great. So Halo 2, I'll name a few because I can't just name one. Halo 2 is probably my favorite first-person shooter of all time. Uh, but for nostalgic reasons more than anything else, right? It was just a golden era. I don't care what people say. It was just a golden era for first-person shooters for me. And I really enjoyed... The acting and the story, I, I really loved the Great Schism. I mean, everything about the story of Halo 2 was amazing. But let's get to the obvious. Look at me and look at my channel. Metro Exodus is my favorite modern game of all time for so many obvious reasons. Let's get the, let's get the stuff that most people mention and then they don't mention anything else out of the way. The game is fucking beautiful. It's got little niche things that I didn't think I would ever experience in a game, at least... Not until I was older, until things were more narrowed down. The game is amazing. It makes you care for the characters. Whether you read the books or not, but I recommend reading the books before you play the games, or at least reading the books before you play Exodus. I do. I really do. It's a painfully beautiful experience, and that's how I would describe it. It is delightfully melancholy, and the games have really, really captivated me. And honestly have done really well for me too, because uh, they benefited me wholeheartedly and the community around the metro games is amazingly supportive i love it so of all time right now metro exodus easily easily and the only reason i haven't played it since i finished sam's story is simply because i don't want to play it unless i'm recording and i'm very limited of what i can play and when and when i can record so i have to be kind of careful and i have to plan things because of mine and my girlfriend's conflicting schedules so everything has to be in some sense or whatever strategized so back in the day halo 2 now metro exodus stalker i love stalker with mods is an amazing revitalized experience especially playing with the provac build that i use that is an amped up anomaly build i really love it but metro exodus is my favorite game of all time right now not just because of the stories and how it builds off of the books but also because Metro Exodus hurts you. It makes you care about people. And then it takes them away. It literally punishes you for being careless. I would argue impatient. For not being compassionate. The game will punish you if you're bad. And the game will reward you. And bless you. and Like a capricious little god. If you are good. It's beautiful. The lighting in the levels is amazing. From the dark filled corridors of the radioactive mushrooms glowing in green. That became a resource, by the way, which is amazing. A chemical resource to scrapping things. Having to quickly make a can around a corner out of your backpack because you were literally out of scrap and you need to distract a guy so you can move from one corridor to the other. Because I religiously play the Metro game stealthily. I absolutely love the stealth. And I would argue that, especially Metro 2033 and Last Light, were all, they were more built for stealth than they were open combat. But Exodus freed it up a little bit. And Exodus was such a big deal for 4A games. Exodus was such a big deal for 4A games. It was their ability. I feel like 4A games really never had the opportunity and resources, from what I can tell, what I've read, and what videos I've watched about them behind the scenes. From what I can tell, I feel like Metro Exodus was the first chance that 4A games actually had to spread their wings and say, this is what we can really do. And they can do a lot. <laughs> so Metro Exodus is beautiful. And I will never forget when I first got to the Volga, you know, barely into the game, right? And I go to the cabin just off the right from the tracks. And I'm on my way because I know there's a piece there because I use my binoculars to see there. And before I get there, it just starts I'm raining. Loving these rain effects. And it's a radioactive area. So I put on my gas mask in the game. And I can hear the rain hitting my gas mask. And I'm like, I can play the game later. I'm just going to sit here and listen to the rain. I said it in the episode. I mean, it was amazing. Little details. There are a few things sound related wise that I love more than the sound of rain hitting a metal roof. Hitting a mask, hitting the bill of a hat. Rain is bliss. And they put blissful rain in Metro Exodus. And that is not something they had to do, but they did. The weather plays a part. The sandstorms. I mean, I, I'm going to move on because I'll be talking about this all video. But yeah, Metro Exodus, hands down. We'll see if it maintains that title. But uh, there's no close runner-ups right now. It's the truth. 
I have to just be honest, it was my favorite game to play on the channel, and I really can't wait to play it again, whether we do a four player or not. So, moving on to your next question, Max, your favorite book. My favorite book? Again, I, it's hard to pick one, but I will, because you took the time to ask. My favorite book of all time is probably... I grew up really liking Stephen King's Cell. Just look it up, because I'm not going to spoil anything. They also made a movie with John Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson, but it did not live up to the hype. Although it had great actors, but it's another point. But now, right? I want to go from the then to the now. Then it was Stephen King's Cell. Nowadays... My favorite book, it's actually a tie between <laughs> Halo Legacy of Onyx with Julem Dama's son, the Pale Blade, as the main, if not one of the main antagonists. Good story. And I don't give a shit who disagrees because it was really nice to see some things happen to the often overinflated power of the human Spartans and to see a San Haley be able to deal with them. And how they deal with them was uh, pretty cool. So it's Ty, though. The book that ties with it, I would have to argue, would be Metro. I really liked Metro 2033. And the reason I like Metro 2033 is because it works in tandem with Metro 2033, the game. I like that it explains the stations in the Metro. It explains all the life. And that wherever you were in Moscow, when the nukes fell and the missiles hit, with the Great War, with World War Three in the series, right? You were either lucky, okay, or screwed, depending on which station, because some stations were closer to the surface, some were lower, and you really had to be lucky to get a good one. And, and Metro 2033, it describes that some people's stations were too close to the surface and they were mutated. People had third legs, people were messed up, mutated monsters. Or as the books, <laughs> as Dmitry Gluhovsky described it, all sorts of weird shit crawling around the metro. <laughs> and that might not be right word for word, but it was really good. It was really visceral. I could reread that book, and now I listen to it a lot on Audible because I'm usually working on something while I'm listening. No matter what it is, if it's a chore, if I'm at work or whatever, I do Audible because it's... I hate to say it, but I like to multitask and get other things done, so Audible's a nice example. And the Audible narrations of 2033, 2034, and 2035 are all amazing books, so I highly recommend all of them. It is expensive, but then you have them, and it's worth keeping. So I think it's worth uh, making that investment. What do you think about Russian Doomer music? I like to edit my videos while listening to it. <laughs> and I'd heard it before you like started bringing it up in the server, but I don't know. It's strangely, it's melancholic, and it's sad. And keep in mind that what I'm about to explain to you comes from the perspective of an American who has never left his country, okay? Take that with a grain of salt, all of you from across the world, especially those of you in Eastern Europe. I like Russian Doom music because I feel like, although it's kind of a meme and a joke in itself, it also describes the melancholy and depression behind Eastern European men who are dealing from the still-felt fallout of the collapse of the Soviet Union, despite not being the greatest thing, obviously. And again, forgive what I'm saying, I'm American, I don't, I've never been there, I don't know much about the customs, but... To take, a, to take a leap of faith here, I think that although kind of funny and as a meme and as a joke, it also represents an actual true feeling. It's kind of like when you say just kidding, but there's always a little bit of truth behind every just kidding. The truth is, it's not easy. From what I have learned from a friend, you know, from people in the server, from, from Poland, from, from Russia, from Ukraine, you know, my girlfriend, her family, they're from Bosnia, from just just all these different countries across different parts of the world. Now, I know that that's a far stretch down, but then let's go further up and describe the feeling of the people. And, and they, I think it really goes into the feeling of where's our future that we were promised? We're, st we're not still racing for space against the U.S. And maybe that's looking way too into it. Maybe I'm just fantasizing because I think it's cool because I'm not there so I can make about it what I will. But when I listen to Russian Duma music, it doesn't make me sad. It just kind of calms me in a way. I don't know why. I think it's funny. And I think it's absolutely funny that they use rage faces and, and troll faces with like cigars lit. Like the stereotypical Russian drinking, smoking, got Nick. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like to edit my videos too. What's in the background very lightly. Um, 
And I listen to a lot, a lot of Soviet Wave. It might be weird, but I mean, it's not surprising considering all the games that I play. So, last part of your question, because I know I've been dragging on. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any plans of visiting Russia? If yes, then when? No official plans, but I want to. Obviously. And, you know, back when you were living on the other side of your country, basically, would have visited there. But it would be nice to know people if I do visit. So, Moscow. I, mean, I, I Hands down. Moscow. Would like to see other places too. And the Trans-Siberian Railway. I mean, I would like to experience these things, but that would take resources, time, and planning. A lot of which I just don't have the resources for. So when? I'll get back to you on that. We kind of talk every other day, so I'll let you know. Thanks for the questions, noob. Moving on from that. Promi, my good friend Miha and one of our patrons said, focus on bad ending and Metro Exodus, or just focus on bad parts in every game. Of course, we want some gameplay. I haven't realized we have to write questions here. Laugh out loud. I know I should have specified, but it's just easier for me if the questions are in the video. So, moving on, and I'm sorry again. It says, do you like Metro or the Halo series more? Metro. I love Halo, and I grew up with Halo, and I had Halo long before I knew what Metro was. I'm from a Western audience. It took a while for it to get over here, but it had been over here kind of in a cult following, and then eventually it snuck up to me, which will answer that with 4A's question later. I like Metro more, hands down. Do you, did you enjoy Metro 2034 book? Everyone is hating on it, but I enjoyed it so much. I hope Hunter will appear in the next game. Yes, I did. Now, I, I don't think... It didn't have the did, replay value. It's what you call a game you can replay. But I don't think it's a book that I... I have reread Metro 2033 five times. And I have listened to it 12 times. Probably more. <laughs> and uh, But 2034, I've read once and listened to four times. I listen to it while I work. Especially with mundane tasks. It just helps to pass the time and escape from your boring reality of redundancy. But... No, I liked it. And I liked the Hunter saga. I liked hearing more about him. He needed to be more fleshed out. And I would absolutely love to see him in another game with the Metro series, of course. But we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, because a lot of that book is kind of shrouded in mystery and uncertainty. So we really don't know. But no, it was a good book. I don't think it's as good as 2033. And I think it almost ties with 2035. 2035 was heartbreakingly sad and painful. But anyways, moving on. Yeah, I like it. It's a good book. What's your most memorable moment from any of the Stalker games slash mods, etc.? Starting off, the first memorable moment I had, I'll name two, maybe three. <laughs> the first memorable moment I had with the Stalker games was playing Vanilla, Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, while back. And, I mean, like, CD days. <laughs> or no, Steam days, sorry. But I was playing it a while back, and I was closing in on what is commonly referred to as the bandit base in the valley. And closing in on it, using the pipe network to get under into their base and kind of close the gap of opening and get under their watchtowers, all of a sudden, not one, but several military patrol groups showed up. I did not realize this at the time, but I heard Kalashnikov fire on all ends, shotgun fire. I mean, everybody was shooting at everything at this point. I finally get to the end of the tunnel network and climb out of this divot ditch. And you guys who play Stalker a lot might know what I'm talking about. And there's a bandit standing there, looking away from me, crouched behind some concrete slabs. And I come up behind him to take him down. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, nowhere, a pair of snorks show up and maul his ass. And then they turn their attention to me. A grenade... <laughs> Lands right beside them, blows them up, sends one flying towards me. I'm still shooting it because I think it's alive, screaming like a little pussy. Like, I was losing my mind. And I go outside, and there are just bandit and military bodies everywhere. Ukrainian military members and bandit bodies everywhere. And if that wasn't enough, there were more snorks. And you could hear people screaming in the distance, but you just didn't know where they were. So, I can't remember what exactly the mission was at this point, thinking about it, but that was crazy. That was vanilla. Favorite modded moment, Miha would have to be the first time I played Provax Build because it is one of the, I think it's arguably the best build of Anomaly for the Stalker mods. And there's multiple reasons for that. We can get to that maybe in a future video, but it's just enjoyable because you can pick up and go. It starts you off with a standard, you know, 
AK-74 SU, I believe it is, and a Makarov PM. And I like the kind of quick get up and go, and I really like playing on Iron Man. But my favorite moment was when I decided I started off as a free stalker, and I went over to the swamps to join Clear Sky. And that's when I discovered that Clear Sky was probably my favorite faction. If they did survive the events of Clear Sky and thereafter, then I would probably want to join them because they seem to have the best allegiances lined up with people, the best understanding. They get along with mercs. So everybody they border with, they get along with. And that's really good for their security. I also like where their base is. It's really pretty. And from that build, I just remember experiencing my first emission and seeing the skybox light up with these radiated... It was almost like northern lights, but it was just ominous and scary like the end of the world was happening and I was running and I took shelter in a cabin and I heard voices nearby I go one room over and there's four bandits camping in there hiding from the storm so I decided just to stay put because all I had was my pistol was my AK was out of ammo and uh, one of them gets curious and must have heard me of the proximity because you guys know how derpy the game is and wanders over to me and I shoot him in the head luckily kill him with the first shot don't miss and the rest of them come over. I manage to put two down. I get seriously wounded. That guy gets seriously wounded. He runs to the next room, I think, to heal himself. So I heal myself. And then out of nowhere, some other Clear Sky members show up and gun the last bandit down and take shelter with me. And even after the storm was over, they went over to a nearby campfire and just camped out. And I just sat and listened and played to the same <laughs> preset guitar tracks. So it's fun. And the best part about Provax build is, although it's a little glitchy and sometimes doesn't work, if you get a guitar, you can play it. Your character will even do this weird, like, bobbing animation while he's playing the guitar. Ah, so good. Too bad we can't play the Peaceful Ending by Crumb in the game. That would be amazing. Okay, so moving on from that, and... Oh, yeah, you have a last question. Do you see yourself doing YouTube in the following years? Fuck yes. Why would I quit after I've sunken this many years into it? I mean, granted, I'm not as big as a lot of people would have been in this short amount of time, but I don't do those video style of videos. The thought process videos, the what be, the theory, the, you know, <laughs> hypothesis videos. I don't do those because they are boring to me. So I don't want to make them for other people and make them bored. I like playing the games, enjoying them, because it's usually to record I have to give my free time. So I think that explains itself. Yes, Miha, count on it. And I hope that you guys will continue to watch because without the support, no, I would not. But I really appreciate that you guys are here supporting me. Moving on. Ah, yes. My good friend Darth Redbeard and fellow Total War aficionado. He puts, for your questions, highlights. Do highlights. So the Metro series, he wants me to do highlights instead of the full campaign. So only the bad ending sections and not the full playthrough. Gotcha. Try modded for Stalker. There's another for modded. I need more people to speak up if you don't want modded to be played first. He says, number three. Maybe some more strategy games or simulation style games. Branch out to more people and of course never forget your Halo and World of Tanks roots. Halo is more of my route than World of Tanks is, FYI. But you're right. I need to do more of those videos. And I have. Recently I did a really fun little montage video playing in Sand Trap on Halo 3 with my buddies in the Goodfields. Those videos take time. Time I don't always want to give away. Sometimes it's nicer to just record a Let's Play. It's just the truth. It's not a laziness thing, but I don't have a paid editor, nor am I a professional editor. I'm just teaching myself new tricks every time I make a new video. So, hopefully that answers those for you. He put my question for you. What's the scariest game you know that will scare the shit out of people? I want to find out for my wife to play and give her some nightmares since she made me watch The Woman in Black. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty messed up movie. Um, I mean, it depends on how easy she is to scare, right? Like currently, uh, for Christmas, I built my girlfriend a PC. And she wasn't just into like mobile games, but now she's been getting into horror games. So we've been playing Phasmophobia with her, and she got a single player horror game called Visage, which I was supposed to play on this channel and never did. So now I get to experience it by watching her screen. However, I don't know if your wife is as afraid of horror games as she is. It really depends on what type of horror. Um, it's always good to go for cheap games and indie games on Steam because a lot of times independent developers make up their own rules and do what they want, and that can be nice because they can kind of go as far as they want. I would try Cry Fear because as old as the game is and how it looks like it's using a lot of Half-Life assets, it's still really fun. It's still really unnerving. 
the world is empty and dead and dark. It is an older game, but I recommend Cry of Fear. Alien Isolation on the hardest difficulty. You want her to absolutely not want to go near her computer again, play Alien Isolation on the hardest difficulty. One of the... Probably more than any other game ever, period. Despite it not being my favorite game, it is my favorite horror survival game. Alien Isolation encapsulated... <laughs> encapsulated the time frame of the first movie. Just boxy old monitors and green logo lit up screens. I mean, it was amazing. Everything about it from the atmosphere to the music to the sounds, to the save function with these huge slot drives, and the Xenomorph is smart as shit for an AI. I mean, this thing kills you, hunts you down, and sometimes it, you won't even hear it, and it'll kill you. So Alien Isolation and Cry of Fear, but I also recommend you get her to play the first Outlast. If she likes it a lot, go to the second Outlast, but the first Outlast, in my opinion, is better. I like the setting more. Second Outlast is just like my worst nightmare because I grew up in the country. And those people are like what we refer to as like the bad ones. <laughs> Insane religious, religious fanatics. We don't want that. Okay. P.S. You better not get rid of Facebook. That's one of my ways to contact you. Scythian Menace. Scythian Menace is a mention to the fact, and I'm going to tell this story because I feel like I owe it to you because me and Darth Redbeard went to high school together. We went to school together. We're, we're old buddies. Scythian Menace is because we used to play Rome Total War online together. We need to do it again, I know, but time frames and all that crap. And when we played Rome Total War together, he would play as Parthia. If I'm not mistaken, you did do other factions too. But we would start lobbies of 2v2. We on a team, obviously. And our rule was no late age tech. So we would only use beginners. So like if I played as Carthage, I would only use Iberian Infantry. If I played as Rome, you know, Hastati. I. Hastati, Principes, maybe Triarii. And nobody liked playing the rules. So we would play, and I would always play as minor factions, the kind of factions that up until the modern rendition of Rome Total War or, you know, like Feral Interactive's modern version of Rome Total War will let you play as minor factions too. I'd play as Scythia. And if you guys don't know who Scythia is, it is a nomadic, cavalry-focused faction. They are so fucking cool. And it's fun to play as a weaker faction and beat someone like Rome. It really puts things in perspective as Darth Bed Redbeard learned the hard way. But he got me back. He played as Parthia, he had cataphracts, and at the end of the day, his cavalry was superior as they cornered me into a corner map and smashed my skull in. So that's why I'm known as the Scythian Menace. Oh, you jerk. Moving on from that, 4A Games is posted, and they said, Hey, Euclid, we'd be curious to find out how you came around to playing Metro for the first time. Not a complicated story. But still a good one because it was where my love for the Metro series started. I had seen an ad online for Metro 2033. I don't remember where, to be honest with you. I think it was somewhere on social media. And the artwork kind of captured me. The red, the black, and just the... I mean, this ad said Fear the Future. And I don't even know if it was even official artwork. It was so long ago. A friend of mine gave me his copy of 2033 to borrow, right? I played that game 10 times through. Five days later, I was I beat the game 10 times. Couldn't put it down because all I did was work two jobs. That was back when I was in law enforcement. And I worked two jobs. I would come home and I would play games. I was a bachelor. I didn't have a lot to do. So I played games. This game was amazing. And this was original Metro 2033. This was not Redux. So it had kind of the old nostalgic, the you know... Graphics. I mean, you think about those games back then, too. <laughs> you also have the, the fact that some things were included that are not included in Redux, like the turret on the cursed station and everything. You have all these different objects there. And then I played Last Light. And I love 2033 for its originality and its starting point. It's starting off in the Vivienka and going from being with Artyom's stepfather to being with or Uncle Sasha or being with Hunter, and, and the story developed, and I started to really care about this character. I found out it was made by a book. I was like, oh, fuck. And by this point, I had read a lot of the Halo books already. So I was like, I really like reading video game-focused books, or books that extend the lore. So I did, and I had gotten a paperback version of 2033 online in English, and I read it. Now, over time, it took time for the other two books, well, 2034 at the time, to come to an English version, and it eventually did. Was not able to get it on paper until later, 
But I eventually got all three of them on Audible paperback. And I really want hardcovers of all three if they exist, but one time or another. But yeah, no, honestly, I discovered the Metro series because of a friend. My best friend, his uh, younger brother, who's also a good buddy of mine, told me about it and said, this really seems like something you like. You like gritty. You like dark. He's like, and for some reason, he called me, he told me I was a freak. He was like, you like these games that are like depressingly dark. And they are. <laughs> Especially the books. And I think they captured that enough for a casual mainstream audience to enjoy, but also with hinting enough to say, hey, there's books over here, read those. I've never discovered a series like it, and then I discovered that the story of the Metro series, and I could be wrong, so forgive me, devs, if you do watch this, but I feel like the, the story of the Metro games and then the music can almost feel like there's a glimmer of the story of how 4A games started and why it was started in the first place. And it wasn't always easy for 4A games. They had to do some things that technically weren't smiled upon by all authorities. Not criminal acts, but they had to get equipment. They had to get things to make the games, and I feel like the game's melancholy also describes their melancholy. And as the games get further and further and better things are achieved and bad people are beaten, the better the developer gets and the better the story gets. So it's almost like the developer's story and their game story align in the fact that bigger, brighter, better, and they're getting there. Yeah, a friend introduced me to it. He didn't know anything about the story. He just thought the game was cool. But that game consumed me. And uh, you see where I'm at now. <laughs> so thanks for asking, guys. I hope that answers your question. Cody put Stalker. And I asked him, Modern or Vanilla? He put Euclid all laughing face okay i'll do everything just everything thank you next up is brandon brandon put what really got you into eastern european culture and fiction uh it's different i'm from the west you know i recall and i hate to say this but it's the truth i mean it's not like they'll ever see it but we were raised to believe that People from the other side of the world were different to us to a fault to where we would never understand them. We would never have anything in common. I mean, we grew up believing that they were just a bunch of evil Red Star communists. And I'm not kidding. Not all schools were like this, but we had a lot of teachers that were long past their expiration date. It's the truth. They were hateful. They were old. They grew up when the Soviet Union was still a thing. And... It's interesting to me. I remember being a kid and being absolutely, absolutely hypnotized by the first time I saw Cyrillic lettering. And not all Eastern European is you know, Cyrillic, but a lot of it is. And it, to be honest with you, I can't fully explain why. I just know that it comes down to some simple, stupid things that a kid would say. I like the way they sound. I like the way their language looks. I've been told a few th times by different people that they come from a very sorrowful and hard-working group of people who are very much like us at least at our best and come to find out that it's really just a group of people that was from the other side the people of the nation that competed with us in the race for space now we're getting a little far-fetched in this but that's the truth what gripped me and caught my interest was so many different things like the little things, like the Chernobyl disaster and what happened and why, and the people that rose up to fix the problems that a negligent government would never fix and to save lives, even though they would still be punished for it, which was capsulated decently well, decently I say this, in the HBO Chernobyl series. I think that was really good. Obviously the games, there's a certain grittiness and darkness, and let's take it a step further because everybody says that, right? There's a certain... Like I've said before, sor there's a sorrowful character to games made by Ukrainian and Russian developers and all those in between, Belarusian, just all these different countries. I'm not trying to group them all together, but the games that come from over there just distinguish with me. It comes from everything to the full. When I was a kid and the first time I played Call of Duty Finest Hour, the only campaign I ever wanted to replay again was the Russian one. I like the way they sound, and it was a gross misallocation and misrepresentation of how they use troops. They didn't suicide run in a machine gun nest. If they did, it was desperation. They didn't do that stupid stuff. But 
It still encapsulated me that this country from the other side of the world, which was always depicted as our arch rival, the people were so likable and kind and humble. They do not come off, to me at least, as arrogant as people from this side of the world do. They don't. And, you know, I kind of like to think that if I influence myself with their presence, maybe I will inherit some of those traits. Because I really appreciate their character and I appreciate the humble nature. And everybody has shitty people in their culture, but the culture itself, I don't know a lot about old religion and I don't know a lot about this distinct culture, but I have people on my server that teach me every day, like Max, who I just answered his question. So that was really interesting. <sighs> I'm gonna move on, sorry. If you were to choose between Metro and Stalker to live forever with, which would you choose? Neither! Because they are both bad fucking universes. But if I have to pick one, they're both awful. I mean, they're both bad. There's not one better than the other. Okay, so here, here's here's what I'll tell you. If I had to live in the med, I'm gonna. This is a cop out, so you're gonna hate me. I would choose to live in the stalker universe, but and now I would leave the zone. <laughs> Fuck no, no. But as far as a gamer perspective, if I absolutely had to stay in the zone. Because in the Metro, everything's screwed and we don't know where it's going. But maybe I would want to be in the Metro universe and help Artyom, Sam, Miller, Demir, all of them. I would want to help them find paradise. And maybe help Sam get back to the States and find my family. Maybe. Maybe. But if you were to choose, if we answer that question, we're going to say Metro. But what's a big goal you want to reach in life? There's a lot of pressure on us, especially before we go, we graduate high school and we get into college, to get a degree and get a job and make money and be, make the family proud and not embarrass them. Really? My big goal in life is to keep doing this and to keep moving up working in IT. I've got a lot of things that I've ever wanted that I never thought I would have and I'm not struggling much anymore. Big goal in life? I would like the channel to take off one day. I would really like this style of content to be recognized. And I would like to do it more often. Like, a lot more often. That's my big goal in life. I want my YouTube channel to flourish. It's the truth. So, moving on from that. If your Saint, if your Saint Healy OC were to deviate to the Banished, what would you be your preferred aesthetic and weapons? Well, he would still obviously wield an energy sword. Probably wouldn't be any specified Crimson Blade, but a regular Chrysalis energy sword. I would prefer Halo 2. Halo 2 model. I like I like that version of the Energy Blade. It's my favorite. Uh, aesthetics? Well, he's a counselor. My Halo St. Healy OC, and uh, I misread this because I was thinking of a different brand, and this is my buddy Ardent, Ardent Prayer, who's commenting. Sorry, Ardent. He would still wield his counselor armor. But the Honor Guards wield theirs. He would be as a mercenary. I would assume it would be to help some like Let Valir and others in his positions or similar positions preserve and keep their crews together. I like Let Valir's thinking on that. So I would assume that with Kalis Yeridi, or Kalis Yerad, form, you know, cause formerly Yeridi, that's his name. He was a Covenant High Counselor who discovered that the Great Journey was a lie and merely kept a position and lied about being religious in the hegemony of the Covenant so that he could continue to have an influence and keep his people in power, thus keeping them safe. Yeah. So yeah, energy blade and a carbine. I prefer a carbine. It's my favorite medium to long range weapon in the game. Love it. Especially in the newer games. They're grossly uh, underestimated and underappreciated. They're amazing, especially in four. So rank and job. There are no counselors. It's a different genome. So most likely still a shipmaster on the lines of what Levelier does, but definitely would not secede command nor would I let Gerald Hanai brutes on my ship no they don't belong in my ship it's the truth sorry unless we could form some kind of bond but that'd be hard to do job similar to let Valier's but I think in a more domineering role a more aggressive role let Valier I think was stripped of a lot of his power and ultimate command so it's sad to say but you have a lot of questions, dude. What's another big-time IP you love with all your heart that you don't really talk about much compared to Metro, Stalker, and Halo? 
Good question. I have a few. Uh, the original Rogue Squadron series on N64. I really, really loved it. I mean... Huh. Let's see here. I just found this several weeks ago. It's my N64 guide from when I was a kid. <laughs> and uh, played that a lot back in the day. So that was one of them. I really liked the Blitzkrieg, Blitzkrieg real-time strategy series, but I really only truly liked the first one. Because the first one was difficult and the way it played was just it had an originality and a grittiness of World War II that I really appreciated. And a lot of us here on my channel and revolved around this like similar things. So I hope that answers your question with that. Blitzkrieg, Rogue Squadron. Still haven't played the new one, but time will tell. And money, of course. You said, would you prefer a Star Wars Empire at War sequel or a reboot? I think the games are fantastic. But, sequel. Because I think that a reboot could be nice. I like how the reboot is, and I think the mods are amazing. I actually, I absolutely love using my Lucre Hulks in the game. So thank you for telling me that that was actually a thing. Because this, my favorite Star Wars ship in Star Wars is literally... Oh, I get to answer that question in a second. Cool. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I think we need a sequel. It's time for a sequel. We don't need a reboot. Sequel. The mods have rebooted it enough. We need an actual true sequel with timelines. Both Clone Wars era and Empire era. We need both. At least. And maybe some expansions for further, like, Old Republic. But we'll see, right? You put top three ships of all time in the Star Wars universe. Number one is the Lucre Hulk. I absolutely love the Lucre Hulk. And I like the battleship battle cruiser equivalent of it the heavily armed modified it's still a carrier but it mostly focused on armaments it's basically a space station and they were made for blockades once the trade federation was able to better arm them when they joined the confederacy so i really like that number two i have a soft spot in my heart for the venator i really like the venator i like its earlier you know eclipse of the star destroyer and number three Ships. So, any ship? Not a fighter, though, right? We're going to focus on big ships. Would have to be the Eclipse. As dumb and goofy as it is, and I know it's Legends, I really like the Eclipse. The Eclipse Superstar Destroyer was insane. But that's if you like Legends or not. Thank you for your questions, Arden. Moving on. Benny J006. Favorite music, genre, artist, and song? All these favorites. All the curiosity. I did ask, though, so that's on me, right? Favorite music? To this day, it's probably still modern rock. And by modern rock, I mean like what it was kind of called in the early 2000s, if not before, with like Breaking Benjamin, Saving Abel, Three Days Grace. I used to like Three Doors Down, but they kind of got monotonous after a while. I really enjoyed that stuff too. Favorite genre is modern rock. Favorite artist? <laughs> uh, that's hard. I, I can't pick one. There's too many. There are too many. I'm sorry. I can't pick just one. But we'll go with one. I really like the wholesomeness of Foo Fighters. I like times like these. Um, sorry if I'm saying the name of the song wrong, but they did a really good reboot for COVID-19 where they sang with a lot of artists. And uh, yeah, it was really touching. Foo Fighters are amazing and wholesome. And I think they genuinely give a shit about their fans, which is rarer and rarer these days with music groups that are just looking to suckle at the teat of the money from their fans. Hope that answers your question, Benny. Okay, so next up, we have our comment and questions from Vlad Shelikov. I hope I'm getting that right, as your name is printed in Cyrillic here on the channel. Now he asks, hey, glad to see you doing well. You too, man. I appreciate all your support this far. But, of course, I would personally love to see a full Bad Karma Metro playthrough, and I would also stick around for the Stalker playthrough, even though I've never played it. Also, I'm curious to know, what are your thoughts on some of the classic 90s shooters like Doom and Quake? They're modern reincarnations in games like Dusk that try to capture the 90s lighting in a bottle and be relevant today. See you soon, Spartan. You too, brother. Oh, okay. Glad to hear that and everything. Um, glad that you'd be around for both those series. As far as those games, I really liked Doom. Uh, old Doom was fun, but I actually enjoyed Doom 3 more because I liked the horror aspect of it. And that might be lame, but I really enjoyed Doom 3. Quake, I liked. I always hated that Quake removed me from where the big fights were and put me in a horror setting where I was alone by myself. You know, like, I really wanted to be in the battles because the machinery and the weaponry and the armies used in the battles in Quake were interesting. 
What do I think of them? I think it's good. We need to revive that. We can't just push it back like it was never a thing. It's still fun, and the newer Duke games are proof of that. So, hell yeah. I love them. I'm a 90s kid. Are you kidding me? I absolutely want to see games from my generation I was born in revitalized and brought back and rebooted. You know, it's nice. So, yeah. Hell yeah to that. And thanks, Vlad. Appreciate the comments. So, I have a... Julian Farina, and sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Hello from France. Ah, hello. But first thing first, I do not have a, I do not have perfect English. I hope it's fine for you reading these words. Don't worry about it. My English sucks, and I'm, that's all I speak. But I discovered your content with Metro Exodus playthrough, and I loved your reaction at the end relating to the good ending. Yeah, that was emotional as hell. In order to answer your questions, I'd love to discover an entire Bad Karma playthrough for the three games, obviously. Concerning Stalker, I don't really know the game, so I would love to discover this adventure, modded content or not. Okay, fair enough. But for the third question, I don't really know your content, what you've been playing since you're on YouTube, but I definitely want to discover more of your content. I appreciate that genuine, you know, that genuine, genuine interest. I'm glad that I'm not boring to you at least. <laughs> but I don't know if my answers were useful, but I'm eager to watch more of your content on Metro, Stalker, or other games you're interested in. It is useful. It tells me that you'll be around for the Stalker playthrough. It tells me that you really appreciated the Exodus playthrough. So it just sounds like you're saying, yeah, just do it. And whatever you do, I'll be around. Thank you for your support. Viva la France. We have a comment from Will from Wilnilia Burns. Sorry for pronouncing it wrong again. Doing my best. Can you play Terminator Resistance? It's a good game. It's a very good game. I really like it. I have a feeling you would like it because it has survival aspects. Yeah. I think in time. That might be a side series one day, but it does kind of take away from what we do now because I'd like to keep the kind of the Eastern European theater open on the channel. That's what I really like to go for, but I will consider it. And I already commented back to Will Nelia. So thank you for your comment. Next we have, <laughs> it's either Black O Razor or Black Zero Razor. Do it all, I'll do all of it, including Halo. So Black Razor has always been on the channel commenting here and there, but has always come back to comment. So, okay, I'll do all of it. Everything. I just want everything. That's what I say when I go to a restaurant. What do you want? Everything. Everything on the menu. Next we have Pasta La Vista. And Pasta La Vista recently joined our Discord server, so glad to have you with us. Put, yes, yes, play, play Vanilla Stalker. I'd love to to see some Halo of Friends or something. And I did send you a link on that comment, but it does show that uh, we, we did one. We'll do more in the future. There's actually a couple. Put for Q&A, do you intend to ever grow a beard? I already did, and I hate it. I hate facial hair. And I really don't understand your all's fascination with fa ha facial hair, especially a fascination with other men's facial hair. I get it. They like having it. But I worked in law enforcement for, a long, for years, and I got really comfortable having a baby face. So I don't really like the thought of growing a beard out. Maybe if I get bored again, but as the world slowly, slowly turns to a more normal setting and I started going back into work, I don't want to go back into work with a beard. I like looking clean cut. It's just my thing. It's what I've always done. And last on the questions, we have a comment from my artist friend. And he uh, he put, my thumbnail artist, Azel VFX, what keeps you motivated to create? Emotion. The thought that I might capture something that was not synthesized that was not processed the thought that i created these things and that maybe in some form they'll still be around when i'm not and that might be a little goofy to say because probably not if youtube shits the bed one day that would suck good reason for me to start streaming or something what keeps me motivated to create is my friends and my followers and the people from across the seas that don't judge me for being american they don't judge me for being from a certain country or you know having a dialect that makes that reveals that I'm from West Virginia and they don't judge me for that and they don't judge me at all. Reaching out to people and kindness and relating to people, what keeps me motivated is staying connected. And I really fucking love playing games, if you haven't told by now. <laughs> Josh is one of my best friends, so I really appreciate you leaving that comment, man. Um, what keeps me motivated to create? You, the rest of our friends, the followers on the channel, I mean, really everybody keeps me motivated to create and uh i really couldn't have done it without any of you the inspiration was there and it all started with a reaction video which people talk shit about about the trailer for halo wars 2 i'm just swiping all these god forbidden comments so that was it 
that was all the questions we got for our first actual q a we might do another one in the future but also what you guys could do is just continue to ask questions and i will slowly start to stockpile them because i read all the comments and we'll do another q a when we have enough i think is good this was kind of long but it was our first q a so i think it deserved to be so guys i'm gonna have to think about it stalker vanilla stalker modded personally if it's my choice we're gonna do vanilla first because i think the game deserves to be given proper tribute for existing because without vanilla we wouldn't have this majestic little modded version we always play so probably gonna do vanilla first metro exodus ultimately i want to do another full playthrough and i might at some point maybe in streams and just upload the streams on youtube afterwards but i think we should do the bad endings first i really do because time consumption and all that jazz but we'll see maybe i'll start playing here soon and I just hit the record button. We'll find out. So guys, I hope you liked the video. This is a new style for me, but I really like doing it. And we don't do scripts. We ad lib. And I breathe a lot. Sorry, I can't breathe through my nose. It's broken. So <laughs> if you guys liked the video, feel free to like. If you did not, leave a dislike. Leave a reason why. Or just dislike it because you hate me from the shadows for reasons, I guess. Because there's one of you doing that, you little shit. You want to see more videos like this and others in the future, then subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's the best platform I use. I kind of want to get rid of Facebook. Sorry, Darth Redbeard, but Facebook sucks. With that being said, though, uh, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. See what else you got. There's a lot of other things to view on there, as well as supporting me. You guys can subscribe if you like seeing what you see here. But if you want to support me directly, I do have a Patreon. And we do have three patrons. And those patrons are Legacy11, a friend and fellow streamer. Daniel Cutforth, our oldest patron who supports me heavily every month, and my good friend, Miha. Thank you guys for supporting me. Thank you all for watching, and I will see all of you despite and regardless of whatever we do next in the next video. Bye, guys.